This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, and verse 1 through 2. Hear ye the word which Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. I want to give all honor, glory, and infinite praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Makakudash. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, peace and salutations to the elect scattered abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity. Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Makakudash, Brakatam, to use a quantum, Wa'akim Wa'akwaf, you know, you elders. You brothers, you sisters, a hopeful elect out there laboring, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability, giving diligence, make your calling and election sure, and of course, keeping faith in the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His beloved Son, our Lord and our Savior, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, in these last days, in these perilous times that we're living in. This is Brother Pashai, Ba'an Yashallah, and this be a quick lesson through the Spirit of Papi Ha'abash Shai on the origins of smoking weed, man, sorcery and witchcraft. Because um, yesterday you had these these demons, you know, they wicked, you know, high holy day, called they what they call 420. You see that, and um, um, by my job we had a whole bunch of jakes, a whole bunch of heathens, people in general, you know, it was a whole a whole crowd of them, you know, with, with uh, gas masks on, smoking and partying and bullshitting, man, you know, and I know for a fact all of them don't know the origins of smoking weed, man. Don't know what it would it come where it comes from. The customs and um of these heathen nations, these rit ritualistic, satanic, you know, idolatrous customs of these heathen nations. And um the reasons, you know, um smoking weed came about was the whole ritual. You know, and as a matter of fact, I should have looked this up before I started the lesson, but um I do have something I want to read. But I want to see something right quick. Let me see, uh <clears throat> Yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, I looked at the origins of 420. It says, according to Time Magazine, 420 can be traced to 1971 when a group of five students at San Rafael High School in Marin County, California, began meeting at 4.20 p.m. to smoke marijuana, right? <clears throat> but, all right, this is what I really want to look up, though. Well, this is what I did look up, and I'm about to read it. Now, we go to um, the Google, right? And you look, you look up the origins um, of smoking weed, you know, the ritualistic origin of smoking weed, so on and so forth. I'm going to read it. It says, uh, this article is about entheogenic, no, entho entheogenic, right? Entheogenic use of cannabis. For the plant, see cannabis. For in, in, industrial applications of the plant, see hemp. For therapeutic preparations, see medical marijuana. For the other uses, see cannabis, yada, yada, yada. It says, cannabis has served as an ethogen, a chemical substance used in religious or spiritual context in the Indian subcontinent. The, I'm talking about East Indians, right? Them Elamites over there. It says, since the Vedic period dating back to approximately 1500 BCE, but perhaps as far back as 2000 BCE, it was introduced to the New World by the Spaniards, Edomites, right? In 1530 to 45. So these Spaniards, these Edomites, got the customs from these East Indians, right? And brought it to the Americas around the time of Christopher Columbus voyages, you know, the Spaniards conquering, you know, and, and putting our people in captivity and slavery. See, that's where we got that from. You know, we didn't that we didn't do that back in the ancient world, our people, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Americans, us Israelites, we wasn't smoking marijuana, man, rolling up blunts and shit like that and puffing it up, man. Hell no. You know, that came from the heathen customs. And these Spaniards, the Edomites brought it you know, it's to the New World, which is over here to the Americas, man. To the Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom as well when it came over here. You know, a lot of these Benjamites learned a lot from the East Indians, man. They took a lot, like the Rastafarian, shit like that. They got it from the East Indians. They drew on dreadlocks. They got it from the East Indians, man. They got it from the Elamites, the, these heathens. All that has heathenistic customs. That's what I started with the precept in Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, verse 1 through 2. Learn not the way of the heathen. Right? The Heavenly Father do not want you to be associated with these heathen nations, period, in their practices, man. So if you're doing so, the Lord gonna put you to death. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep reading on down. It's gonna prove how it's, it's wicked as all hell, man. And of course, a lot of brothers and sisters did that in times past, being ignorant to the fact. But that's where repentance come in. So you jakes up there that's still smoking, you gotta repent to Yahweh Bashim now shot to remove that weed demon off you. It's a heavy spirit that come with that shit, man. You know they try to say, oh, you don't get addicted to it. It's not a third. No, that shit like crack <laughs> to a lot of jakes, man. 
They can't sleep without it. They can't eat without it. You know, they 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 get high to do licks. You know, rob people. That's demons, man. It's spirits. You see, it says it was introduced to the new world by the Spaniards in 1530 through 45. Cannabis has been used by um, shaman or sh shamanic, right? With shamans, they what? They conjure up spirits. Uh, uh, they call ghosts, but they conjuring up spirits. A lot of shamans. It was an anime with this dude. He was basically warlocks, man. You know, they're uh, what's the word? Like the um, the witch in indoor, man. You know, she was able to conjure up, you know, spirits, and she literally brought the, the spirit of um, the prophet Samuel, man, to, to King Saul. So, shamans, you know, I mean, let me just look it up. Go back to this article right here. Well, it's, it's on Wikipedia, and you brothers just look it up. Let me see. Shaman definition. Let me see what they got. Watch this. It says, a person, this is shaman. It says, a person regarded as having access to and influence in the world of good and evil spirits that's what divinations that's enchantments witchcraft sorcery right it says especially among some peoples in northern asia and north in north america typically such people enter a trance state during a ritual and practice divination and healing and what did the scripture say about you know divinations man right <clears throat> let's get a, a precept you know So this is the book uh, let's, We could do Rami 18 Ooh, Matter of fact yeah let's read this Deuteronomy 18 and verse 9 through 12 It says when thou art coming to the land Which the Lord thy power giveth thee Thou shalt not learn to do after The abominations of those nations Right and there's no difference today man When you do the research and history On these different customs of these heathen nations Heathen nations or different things that people do And they think is regular or is, you know it's, it's, um, Nothing too bad Oh, it's just like drinking. No, you get a scripture. According to scripture, you could drink, but in moderation. You know, that's what they call the wine and spirits, because spirits do come with that as well. If you drink, if you drink too much, you know, you start slurring your words. You know, you start stumbling and falling. Your mind is all diluted. You start speaking things that you shouldn't be saying. All type of stuff be going on. You get real angry or you know sad or whatever. You pass out when you're in the street. Nah, that's why you gotta drink in moderation, man. Allah lawyer how shall I drunk wine? You know, scripture say give strong drinks to a man that's ready to perish. You know what I'm saying? So it's in moderation, you know, in order, you know. But when it comes to weed, you can't compare the two. Yes, weed is a plant. The Heavenly Father created it for its purposes. It has its purpose on its earth, but it's not to be um, crushed up, rolled up with tobacco. And that's all, that's all, that whole thing is a ritual, man. And you smoke it and you inhale the smoke, then it puts your mind in a trance. That's all satanic. It's all demonic. You know, drinking is you just... You know, get some grapes, you know what I'm saying? All type of stuff. How they make the wine and they step on the grapes, the wine press, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you're drinking that's you just drinking, right? But so you know, a lot of jakes they try to compare the two, right? But that's what we set up to teach, you know. Let's read this Deuteronomy 18 and verse 9. It says, When thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do the abominations after those nations. So smoking weed is an abomination. I'm gonna prove it. It says, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire sacrifices that's going to abortions as well. So lucky I got interrupted, but um, like I was saying, you women out there that, that commit abortions, you know, that's you passing your kid through the fire. You know, a lot of men and women, they pass their kids through the fire by changing their sex. You know, when they change their child's sex or allow it to happen, that's you passing your kid through the fire. That's all satanic. Will Smith, he passed the kids through the fire in the industry. Dwayne Wade passed the kids through the fire in the industry. Joe Jackson passed all the Jacksons <laughs> through that fire, man. You see that? And um, it was, a, uh, I think, a Moabite king, if I'm not mistaken, that passed his son through the fire, his firstborn, to win a certain war, man. Because these demons require sacrifice on the left-hand side, right? Now, back to the lesson, though, right? So it says, well, back to the scripture, right? Deuteronomy 18 and verse 10. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or consulted with familiar spirits, or a wizard, nor necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination to Yahweh Bashem Shai. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy power drove um dove drove them out be from before thee. So if you're practicing these um witchcraft, these sorceries, these, these in um enchants, if you're a wizard, which is a male witch, a necromancer. You know, if you're sitting there consulting with familiar spirits, 
you a trauma, you enchanter, uh, divinations, observer of times, going to the zodiacs, you know, all the so on and so forth, right? Because uh, we don't have that knowledge. The knowledge of the so, so called what they call the zodiacs today, that's not the right knowledge. That's all that's all witchcraft. But in any event, all of that is an abomination to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Now, from there, let's go back to what I was reading, right? Because remember, learn that the way of the heathen. And as in reading, it goes back to what? These Indians, the subcontinent, these Elamites, right? Or I'm reading from the top. So it says, cannabis have served as the ethogen, ethnogen, a chemical substance used in religious or spiritual context in the Indian subcontinent since the Vedic period dating back to approximately 1500 BCE. But perhaps as far back as 2000 BCE, it was introduced to the new world by the Spaniards, Edomites in 1530 to 45. Cannabis has been used by um, shaman, sham, shamanic, and pagan cultures to ponder deeply religious and ph philosophical subjects related to their tribe or society, right? And I read what a, sh a shaman is, man. You see, those as that's into divinations, which is an abomination. So it says to achieve a form of enlightenment or unravel unknown facts and realms of the human mind and subconscious, and also as. Um, Erodesaic uh, during rituals or orgies, man. It's all satanic. They get high and do orgies, get high and do rituals. They get high to get some type of enlightenment. You know, that's all off, man. It says there are seven references in Greek mythology to a powerful drug that eliminated anguish and sorrow. Herodotus wrote about early um, ceremonial practices by the Scythians. Um, I believe if I pronounced that right, it says thought to have occurred from the fifth to second century BCE. Into uh into into Nerent, um Slakia. Right? Into uh it I don't know how to pronounce that Salakia, right? And Hindu saints have used it in the Indian subcontinent for centuries. It says Mexican Indian communities occasionally use cannabis and religious ceremonies by leaving bundles of it on church altars to consume, to be consumed by the um, entities, right? Which these you, you Iskarites are going off, man. Who the who the Iskarites got, who the Iskarites got that from? Who conquered them? Spaniards. You see that? The Spaniards, man. Remember, I read earlier just now in the same little chapter or the same little paragraph, the, the, the Spaniards brought it to the New World of 1530 through the 45s, man. So that's that's all you need to read on that. Like I said, it's not going to be a, a too long lesson. Right? As a matter of fact, <laughs> hold on, let me see something. Let me just jump on down and see what they got. You see? Yeah, watch this, man. It says, the earliest known reports regarding to the sacred status of cannabis in the Indian subcontinent come from the Atho, Atharva Vita estimated to have been ran sometime around 2000 through 400, 1400 BCE, which mentions uh, cannabis as one of the five sacred plants which release us from anxiety and that a guardian angel resides in its leaves. That's all folly, man. A guardian an angel is inside. No, it's demons. <laughs> it's spirits, man. It's demons, man. Not fucking no guardian angel. It says the Vedas also refer to it as a source of happiness, joy giver, and liberator in in the raja um, valaba the gods sent these um, idols man the gods send him to the human race so that they might attain the light lose fear and have sexual desires many households in india own and grow a cannabis plant to be able to offer cannabis to a passing sehu ascetic holy man and during some evening um even in devotional services it is not uncommon for cannabis to be smoked by everyone present now it says cannabis was often consumed in weddings or festivals honoring Shiva. And who is Shiva? Shiva. It says the um the opposite whatever. Also known as uh, Mahadeva. It says the great god is one of the princ principal deities in Hind of Hinduism. So it's an idol, man, a false god. So when you're smoking weed, you're honoring Shiva. Right? I'm not even reading no more on that. You know, you can just look that up yourself. It says who said it? Back to the other one, it says cannabis that was often consumed in weddings or festivals honoring Shiva, who is said to have brought it down from the Himalayas. That's folly. It is still offered to Shiva in temples and uh, Shivarita day, whatever, while devotional meetings called um, bhajans, although it's necessarily associated with Shiva, are occasions for devotes 
to consume the drug liberally, yogis or sadhus, al along with other Hindu mystics, have been known to smoke a mixture of cannabis, sativa, and tobacco. You see, that's what jigs do. They don't they call it what graba, you know, a fonto leaf. They they tobacco. They get the backwoods, you know. They get the different things. And I know because I you know I grew up in as a fucking gentile man. You see, that's how you know these different things. And these these fucking um Ishmaelites selling in the, in the corner stores to everyone, man. They come. I be hearing Jake. Let me get a zigzag. Let me get a backwood. Let me get some some leaf, man. Let me get some papers. Let me get some fonto. All of this. The Lord gonna put you to death. You don't know, repent, man. This is not no game. So y'all wanted to celebrate last night, 420. Man, listen, the Lord gonna bring massive judgment, man. Very soon. It says, uh, yogis or sadhus along, along with other Hindu mystics have been known to smoke a mixture of cannabis, sativa, and tobacco in order to enhance meditation. See, that put them in a trance, man. This is particularly common during the festival of Diwali and, and Kumbh Mela. And that's why a lot of jigs, right? <laughs> a lot of jigs, when they get high, what, what they become? Uh, philosophers, man. They started talking about shit that makes no sense and they try to make it make sense. Little bro, you know, you see the couch, right? But is that a couch or a love seat in it? But I thought a love seat had to have love in it. Shut the fuck up. You don't know shit, man. They think they so deep when they high and shit, man. You know? Jake is Jake is bugged the fuck out. They gotta repent, man. You know, these Jakes, man. But that's all, that's all I'm concerned with, you know, Israelites. I'm not, I don't care about you heathens. You, you, you East Indians, you Edomites, y'all could do, y'all could smoke all the weed I want. I don't care. But, you know, Jake's, you Israelites, you got to come out of that, man. You had to, you got to come out of that. But I already know two thirds, y'all not going to do it. But it's only for the elect, you know, because it might be a member of the elect that's, that's still, you know, um, battling that demon. And they, they got to get that demon off you, man. So from there, I already read this a lot of scriptures. I want the, the main scriptures I want to read. All right. So. We don't get the classic, man. All right, because that's defiling your temple. All right, let's get that. And I'm going to end off, man. You know, none too long, straight to, straight to the point. I went to the history, you know. <clears throat> so it says, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Most High, and that the Spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of the Most High, him shall the Most High destroy so if you defile your temple with with uh, marijuana, right? It could be with pork. It could be all type of stuff you defile your temple with, man. But if you, if, in this lesson, I'm talking about the origins of smoking weed, man. Sorcery and witchcraft. So if you defile your temple with familiar spirits, divinations. You know, you honoring Shiva. The Lord can put you to death. It says, if any man defile the temple of the Most High, him shall the Most High destroy. For the temple of the Most High is holy, which temple ye are. Right, it says, let no, man, let, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. So you may think you know it all. You know, you, you may think you're wise in this world. We got to become a fool. We got to get retaught. Because these things you didn't know growing up. You know, so a lot of Jace will hear this video and try to defend it. Like, no, you know, the Lord created this, the herb, so we could, you know, mix it up and, you know. No, man. You're going to smoke um, poison ivy? The Lord created poison ivy, man. That's a, um, a herb. That's a plant. You know, you're going to sit there and smoke poison ivy? No, because you're going to put to death. You're going to die. You see that? But the Lord created bushes, and he got the bushes with the thorns in them. You're going you're gonna to jump in the bushes with thorns in them. Go, oh, this is a bush. You know, the Lord created it, but let me just jump in this. right. No, you're going to get poked up. So it's common sense, man. It's common motherfucking sense when you go into the history of things. That's what you got to study to show that's approved unto the most high. Until you're how about Shemiah Shai, man. Right? Um... I need a couple more. <clears throat> this book, Ecclesiastical, this book of Syrac, chapter, chapter 12, right? In verse 6. For the most high hate of sinners, right? Because, you know, that's an abomination to the Lord. I read it earlier, divinations, enchantments, and sorceries, and the origin of smoking weed. So the most high hate of sinners, and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly, and keep a thumb against the mighty day of their punishment. Let's get chapter 21 and verse 6. Ecclesiastes 21 and verse 6. He that hateth to be reproved is in the way of sinners. So if you if you hear this video and you hate it, oh, I don't want to hear that. You know, you hate to be reproved. But he that feareth the Lord will, will repent from his heart. So repent, man. That's it. Repent. If you're not, if you, if you, um, battling that demon, ask Yahweh Bashim al Shah to remove it from you. And repent, man. That's it. That's all I can say. You see? So, I don't want to desire you was edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai. 
I want to give Kol Laim La Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rechak Wadash double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone peace and salutations to the elect scattered abroad pushing his truth and sincerity without him say Shalom while Baba Ball Shalom.